Thank you for joining us as we continue with part C of the essential relations, the second relation. The second relation, the relation between the astral body and the physical, which for the majority is the control by the positive astral nature of the negative automatic physical. The physical body, the instrument of desire, is swayed and controlled by desire, desire for physical life and desire for the acquisition of the tangible. As a soul, I work in light. Proceed slowly and with caution. And darkness cannot touch me. I take my stand within the light that he affects. I work and from that point I never move. Cultivate the realization that eternity is long and that which is slowly built up endures forever. What is the sound? The mass of aspirants and of disciples are today learning the meaning of the OM, O-M, which is not the word made flesh, but the word released from form and expressing itself as soul spirit and not as body soul spirit. The sound of the OM and the sound itself are all related to vibration and to its differing and varied effects. The secret of the law of vibration is progressively revealed as people learn to sound forth the word in its three aspects. Students would also do well to ponder on the distinction between the breath and the sound, between the process of breathing and of creating directed vibratory activity. The one is related to time and the other to space, and they are distinct from each other. And as the old commentary puts it, the sound, the final and yet initiating sound, concerns that which is neither time nor space. It lies outside the manifested all the source of all that is, and yet is not. What is the sound? The creative point of tension, a tension achieved by a planetary logos when he responds to the sound of the ineffable name and breathes it forth in his turn in three great sounds which made one sound on his own plane of expression, thus creating the manifested world, the impulse towards the unfoldment of consciousness and the influence of life itself. This is the sound. The OM, rightly sounded, releases the soul from the realm of glamour and of enchantment. It is the sound of liberation, the great note of resurrection and of the raising of humanity to the secret place of the Most High, when all other words and sounds have failed.
dimly the one who seeks hears the faint whisper of the life of God. He sees the breathing of that whisper, which disturbs the waters of his spatial life. The whisper penetrates. It then becomes the sound of many waters and the word of many voices. Great is the confusion, but still the listening must go on. Listening is the seed of obedience, O Chila on the path. Having pervaded the entire universe with a fragment of myself, I remain. The OM is useless to most people, even though trained students may now be deriving benefit from its use. This general uselessness is caused not only because people do not use the word correctly, but also because, even when using it, they are not holding its significance firmly in their consciousness. Man only hears the distant sound and knows it not for what it is. The disciple hears the sound and sees its form. The one who stands for the third time upon the mountaintop, hears a clear note and knows it as his own, as ours, as yours, and yet the note which none have sounded forth. Rule seven for applicants. Let the disciple turn his attention to the enunciating of those sounds which echo in the hall where walks the master. Let him not sound the lesser notes which awaken vibration within the halls of Maya. Sound, the devas and humanity. Sounding the sacred word. Students would do well to remember that its sounding forth vocally upon the physical plane means little. The important factors are to sound it silently, inaudibly, and within the head. Then, having done so, to hear it reverberate there, and to recognize that this self-initiated sound breathed forth from a point of tension is a part of the original sound as it takes form as a word. When a man perfectly expresses the Om, he can then sound the Om with effectiveness from progressive points of tension until the third initiation. Then the effect of the Om is such that the personality as a separate identity disappears the soul emerges in all its glory and the first faint sound of the original sound breaks upon the ear of the transfigured initiate. Let's establish a point of soul focus. And from that high point, Envision the future as we progress along the path to a level of development in which we can begin to touch the jewel in the lotus. In the Rays and the Initiations on page 190, Master DK gives a progression We'll read this slowly and deliberately, knowing this is in our future. A reward along the path for the pain, suffering, discipline, and obedience to the path of discipleship. Lift to that highest point 
and attempt to see the jewel, to stand in the radiance of that great point. Focus the force at the jewel's point and find the veil that it can touch. Carry the force from point to point and then project. Look for the energy in form behind the veil attacked. A rent within the veil exists. Find it and see. A path lies through the veils, giving access to the several courts. Walk on that path wielding destruction and clearing out the refuge, refuse in the court. The court of the money changers is the last. Meet the descending forces and find the current which is yours. Hear that note, feel that vibration. Watch for the evil stream of force which seeks to mend the rents. Project upon that stream the energy of which you know. It led you from the ashram into the veils. Use it and drive the evil back unto the astral plane. Work with the sound and know it as the source of power. Use first the voice, then use the OM, and later use the sound. All three together will suffice. This is a very advanced description of the path that leads far ahead of us, but worth noting in relation to the importance of driving evil back unto the astral plane and the use of sound, voice, the OM. Ponder on this. Here we have the triangle that represents the notes. Purpose, the note of synthetic sound. Soul consciousness, the note of attractive sound. The intelligence aspect often called the mother aspect, the note of nature. Consider your relation to the elementals and the divas with which we must cooperate to handle the tests. Desire to hear, desire to be heard, desire to sound the note of the soul. The relation of the pairs of opposites. These can be selfishly utilized or divinely blended. The positive and receptive qualities blended for higher service. The masculine and feminine qualities balanced and coordinated in service. The note of the soul harmonizing with the note of the personality in each and every expression. Life conditions selfishly appropriated or gathered together in group formation in community with soul consciousness and pure intention. Sounding silence, creating new harmonies, vibrations of healing sound radiating into the darkness. Selfishly cornered, if I may use such a phrase, or blended and shared, inspired by a loving heart, 
offer it as service to the ones we seek to love, heal, serve, and aid. How are these relations being utilized in creative expression? The Etheric Physical Vehicle The old occult injunction which said to a man, Know thyself, for in thyself is to be found all that there is to be known, is still the rule for the wise students. If each one of us would scientifically regard ourselves as centers of force, holding the matter of our bodies within our radius of control, and thus working through and in them, we should have a hypothesis whereby the entire cosmic scheme could be interpreted. The simple rules from the Gita include Learn that the form is but the veil which hides the splendor of divinity. Realize that the one life pervades all forms, so that there is no death no distress, no separation. All of these teachings relate directly to the science of the Atakarana. Bridging from the physical etheric to the astral vehicle, on to the head and the petals of the egoic lotus, we can learn much through the use of the pictorial and visual imagination. This bridging must take place, Master D.K. says, in the rays and the initiations. From the physical to the vital or etheric body, this is really an extension of the life thread between the heart and the spleen. Thus, the importance of meditations one and two. Next, from the physical and the vital, regarding them as a unity, to the astral or emotional vehicle, this thread emanates from or is anchored in the solar plexus and is carried upwards by means of the aspiration till it anchors itself in the love petals of the egoic lotus. Thus, the importance of dissipating individual glamour and then from the physical and astral vehicles to the mental body. One terminus is anchored in the head and the other in the knowledge petals of the egoic lotus, being carried forward by an act of the will. Thus the importance of dispelling illusion. Radiance we are and power. We stand forever with our hands stretched out, linking the heavens and the earth, the inner world of meaning and the subtle world of glamour. We reach into the light and bring it down to meet the need. We reach into the silent place and bring from thence the gift of understanding. Thus, with the light we work and turn the darkness into day. Let us review the Tibetan master's teaching on the descent of ideas from impressions. Today, in relation to the reception of divine sound and sounds, vibrations, as higher clear audience on the mental plane into the mental body, and not as clear audience on the astral plane and into the astral body. 
you will need to be able to discriminate the difference in these receptive hearings. One of the difficulties, for instance, facing the aspiring disciple and the earnest occult student is to record directly in the brain impressions from the spiritual triad and later from the monad via the antakarana. This impression must be a direct descent from mental levels to the brain, avoiding all contact with the astral body. Only in so far as this direct descent is attained will the recorded impression be devoid of error. It will not then be tinctured with any emotional complex whatsoever, for it is the astral level of consciousness which is the great distorter of essential truth. Impressions from the ashram or for, from the spiritual triad, which are the only type of impressions with which I am here concerned, pass through three stages. First, the stage of mental recording. The clarity and the accuracy of this recording will be dependent upon the condition of the channel of reception, the antakarana. In this recording, curiously enough, a certain element of time enters in. It is not the time as you know it upon the physical plane, which is but the registration by the brain of passing events. It is the higher mental correspondence to time. Into this I cannot here enter as the theme is too abstruse, for time in this connection is related to distance, to descent, to focus and to the power to record. Second, the stage of brain reception. The accuracy of this reception is dependent on the quality of the physical brain cells, upon the polarization of the thinking man in the head center, and the freedom of the brain cells from all emotional impression. The difficulty lies here that the receiving aspirant or the focused thinker is always aware emotionally of the descent of the higher impression and of the consequent clarification of the theme of his thought. This must, however, be recorded by a perfectly quiescent astral vehicle and therefore you will see one of the main objectives of true meditation. Third, the stage of recognized interpretation. This is an exceedingly difficult phase. Interpretation is dependent upon many factors. The educational background, the point reached in evolution, the mystical or occult approach of the disciple to the center of truth, his freedom from the lower psychism, his essential humility which plays a major part in proper understanding, and his personality decentralization. In fact, the character in its entirety is involved in this important matter of correct interpretation. The Listening Pilgrim Listen, O Pilgrim, to the chanting of the word by the great Deva Lords Hush all earth vibration, still the restless strivings of lower mind, and with ear intent, hark to the sounds that rise to the throne of the Logos. Only the pure in heart can hear, only the gentle can respond. The stormy sounds of all earth struggle, the shrill vibration of the watery sphere, the crashing note marking the place of thought dims the sound and shuts out the tone. He who is silent, quiet, and calm within, who sees all by means of light divine 
and is not led by light reflected within the threefold spheres is he who will shortly hear. From out the environing ether will strike a note upon his ear, unlike the tones that sound within the world terrestrial. Listen, O pilgrim, for when that sound strikes in colorful vibration upon the inner sense, know that a point has been achieved, marking a great transition. Watch then, O pilgrim, for the coming of that hour. With purified endeavor, mount nearer to that sound. Know when its tone steals through the misty dawn or in the mellow sunlight strikes soft upon the ear, that soon the inner hearing will become expanded feeling and will give place to sight and perfect comprehension. Know when the music of the spheres comes to you note by note in misty dawn or sunny noon, at cool of eve, or sounding through the deep of night, that in their rhythmic tone lies secret revelation. Великий заклик з витоку світла, що в розумі Бога. Хай світло струмує в розуми людей, хай лине світло на землю. З витоку любові, що в серці Бога, хай любов струмує в серця людей. Хай прийде Христос на землю. З центру, де воля Бога відома, Хай мета веде маленькі волі людські. Мета, яку знають і які служать вчителі. З центру, що ми називаємо родом людським, Хай план любові і світла здійснюється, і запечатані будуть двері, за якими перебуває зло. Хай світло, любов і могутність відновлюють план на землі. О! Gratitude to all who voice, contribute, and support this process, this group process. As we continue to study the nine essential relations that will lead us into the new astrology, the science of relations, which is the science of triangles, science of the rays, and the signs of the centers as we move into the new age. <laughs> 